say, uh, let it go. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. And we call this time blessed. All right.
to worship the Lord as the worship team continues to lead us in worship. I want to invite our prayer team, Pastor Tommy and the prayer team, to step out and come at this time. If you have a need, if you have sickness in your body, if you have something that you'd like us to agree with you about, we want to pray with you. I mean, you know, sometimes you just need to be encouraged by the Word of God. We want to encourage you. We want you to be lifted up today. If you have a need, there's a need in your family, maybe you're just battling today. You say, I just need, I just need some prayer this morning. As the worship team continues to lead us in prayer, I want to invite you to come. We'd love to pray for you at this time.
Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come on and thank him this morning. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. Praise God. He's so awesome. He's so mighty. He's wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you excited this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Praise God. If you came up for prayer, believe it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. We want to welcome y'all to Harvest Family this morning. What a blessing it is to have you here. Why don't you step out from where you're at? season of battle, but yeah, we know we all battle, we all face storms, tests, trials, but God is faithful, yeah. God is good, yeah. and because of the cross, we are victorious, yeah. so we're, we're discussing this morning, all in, we're continuing, Pastor Tommy kicked us off last week, if you brought your Bible, come on, just hold it up in the air, let's make the devil mad this morning, we're here to receive the word of God. Not the opinions of man, but the, the life-giving Word of God. Turn with me, if you will, in your notes. You can turn to 1 Chronicles and also Genesis 6. But you can also turn in your notes. If you did not get a handout, if you'd like a, a handout of notes, please hold up your hand. We want you to be able to take notes and have this outline with you. I'd love for you to take this and use it in your quiet time, your devotional time this week when you get along with the Lord and, and just spend some extra time in God's Word. We began last week this new series of messages that we're entitling All In. All In for God. And you know, I spend a lot of time seeking God and God, what do you want to talk about? What are you saying? And what are you saying to Harvest Family Church in each season and for this year? And we started with, uh, we can't stay here anymore. And we, we went through that series of messages and really feel like for this season, God is challenging us to, to be all in for Him and uh, to go deeper with Him and that we need to challenge ourselves as a church. And that was the dominant impression I received from the Holy Spirit to, to answer that call uh, to go deeper with Him. And we're going to look at some uh, an individual this morning that is a picture of not of a perfect person, but somebody that went all in for God. All in for God. And, and we see the grace of God so powerfully in this instance. And so I want you to turn inside your notes. We're going to read the scripture in a moment. But we're going to talk about Noah this morning. The Bible simply says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. How many of you are thankful you found grace? Or actually, grace found you. Noah, actually, uh, he didn't get justice. He got grace. Yeah. I mean, you didn't get justice. Yeah. Jesus received justice and wrath for you. Yeah. But we receive grace. If And even though Noah, he may have been better than most at the time, but I mean, he still didn't get what he deserved. If Noah and his family had gotten what they deserved, there would never have been an ark. And how many know God has yet to have someone qualified working for Him? Amen. I don't think you heard what I said. I said God has yet to have someone qualified working for Him. Amen. Thank goodness for Just turn to somebody and tell them, isn't grace amazing? <laughs> and so, just real quick, right off the bat, I just want to get started before we get into the Scripture. And, but number one, let me just say this. It's so easy... Uh, and write this down to get comfortable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So easy to get comfortable and feel like we've arrived. Yeah. Just let that sink in for a moment. You know, Paul the Apostle is obviously someone that we, we look up to and is the greatest example of Christianity that, that uh, 
I believe that Jesus has ever produced. And Paul himself said in Philippians 3, I have not yet attained. But I keep pressing. I keep moving forward. And, uh, and I feel like God wants us to stretch ourselves. God wants you to stretch yourself this year. And he, he, I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to us that we need to take, we shared last year, take the limits off of God. But so many times uh, we just limit God because we don't want to be stretched and pulled out of the comfort zone into the area that God wants us uh, to be in. And I, I'm not a, uh, let me just say this for the record, I believe the Bible teaches against gambling. But uh, if you ever turn on, flip on ESPN sometimes, they have a, a World Series of poker. I don't see how it's much of a sport, but, and obviously I'm not a proponent of it, but how many have ever heard the term all in? All in, when you see those two guys, they're vying for the world title and they're millions of dollars on the line and both of them push everything to the middle of the table uh, and you're talking about millions of dollars on the line and they say, I'm all in. I'm all in. And as again, as I said, I don't believe, the, you know, obviously the Bible teaches against gambling, but I believe that is a perfect picture of what God is calling us to in light of His grace. To be all in for Jesus. To go to, to uh, be all in. Here's what I want to ask you. Have you pushed all your chips to the center of the table with God. And I, I think it's great. Here it is, a cold, rainy day, and you made the effort to be here. And so obviously I know I'm speaking to the hungry bunch today, and you made the effort to get your family here and fight through adversity to prioritize and, and be here to receive today. But uh, let me just say, have you pushed, uh, if I could use that expression, all your chips to the table and God and say, there's no other option for me, God. As Pastor Tommy shared last week, Peter said, Lord, where are we going to go? You are the one that has the words of life. There is nowhere else to go. There is nowhere else to turn. And then secondly, have you gone all in with God? Or maybe this morning, are you holding out? It's just real straightforward question, but just ask yourself that question right here at the beginning. Of this, Have you gone all in for God or do you feel like you're holding out? Because maybe you're here this morning and, and let, me just, let me just say this. Could you imagine a church body that is completely all in? Could you imagine a local church, a local body of believers that they are so all in? They're in spiritually. They're in financially. They're in emotionally. They're in with their gifts, talents, and abilities. They are so, there is nothing that we could not accomplish for God. When all God's people, when the body, we are his body now. Jesus is in heaven. He's the head of the church. The church is his body. But when the body gets all in, and it's not just a finger and arm trying to do the work of God, but the whole body is moving and working together in sync because they're all in for God. Amen. amen. Can I have a better amen? Amen. And maybe just, I believe God's calling us to that. And here's the bottom line. Maybe you're holding out this morning. Maybe you're holding out because you feel like you're going to miss something if you go all in for God. Well, I'm preaching on the pastor. That's good preaching. I'm going to go all in here, but just, you know, to this point. But can I just tell you, if you choose not to go all in, you will miss all that God wants to do. Amen. You will miss the great and awesome plans and the things, the good things God wants to do. You're, you're missing out on the power, the joy, the intimacy, the faithfulness, everything that Jesus made available to us. When we hold back, we miss out on the full package of what Jesus provided. Amen. Man, this is good preaching. I may shout here in a minute. But if you would go all in, I promise you, your relationship with God would go through the roof. And here's what I know for sure, just real quick. Number two, God's not holding out on you. You just write this down. God's not holding out on me. 
Just, just write that down. God is not holding out. He did not hold out. God bankrupted heaven to send his son 2,000 years ago. Jesus, you know, Jesus went all in. Jesus went all in and he died on the cross in my place, church. He didn't hold anything back and I believe that he is calling us to follow suit. He is speaking to us. God went all in. He wants His church to be all in. And here's my prayer. During this month, during this, scene, during this series, and as we start our home groups this weekend, and those of you that have signed up for that, at some point, I just pray that if you haven't already, that you would have an all-in moment with God. Where you just say, God, I'm all in. And God would reveal something to me that I need to put on the table that maybe I don't even realize that I'm holding back that's limiting what he could do. But it's me limiting him by holding something from him. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Have me here with me. I want to be all in, God. So turn with me to 1 Chronicles chapter 1. I promise that's not a message before the message. That's just a part of the message. But in here in this genealogy, here in this genealogy, we see Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Doesn't the genealogy just bless your socks off? <laughs> Don't shout me down because you're getting blessed by the genealogy. I mean, you may be the most devoted Bible reader, but let me know. Sometimes we get to that genealogy and it's going, mm. Thank you for being real today. Can I get a, can I get a witness? Amen. Here's what I love about the genealogies, though, honestly. Because when you look at that, you see... The faithfulness of God, not only to each generation, but to each individual. Each individual. God's faithfulness and grace to each individual. And here's what I love about that. Uh, your, God's faithfulness to you is unlike his, his faithfulness is the same. But because you're an individual and you're wired the way you are, you can see and experience God's faithfulness in a way that maybe somebody else hasn't because your life experience and background and how you're made up is different. You're an individual. But here's what I love about that because every single one of us, you are me, we're trophies of God's grace. And because of that, God shows us out and holds us up and says, look at their life, look at their background, look at their past, look what, they are a trophy of my grace, each one. Amen. Powerful, it's awesome. And, and here's, God has a core value, just write this down. God has a serious core value and it's this, everyone is invaluable and irreplaceable. Everyone. Every single one of us. And that's not a self-esteem technique. Okay? That's not some self-esteem because it's not a, there's never, there never has and never will be another person like you. And I got news for you. That's not a testament to you. That's a testament to the God that created you. Can I have an amen? And the significance of that is this. Nobody can worship God like you can. And nobody can do for God what you are called to do. If you hold back, if you, are, if you don't reach your full redemptive potential and see the light of God's grace and go after God in light of His love and mercy and grace in your life, there will be things for the kingdom left undone. We don't like that, do we? Because we like to push it all on God. Jesus has came, he's died, he sent the Holy Spirit, and he's commanded us, go preach the gospel. I've gifted you, I've given you about ability, talent, he's put resources into your hand, and what will we do to impact eternity, but people's lives right now, with the power of God's message of love and grace. Now listen to this, this is so powerful, because when we read this uh, chronicle, the history of Israel, and here we see Noah. If, and it mentions Noah's sons. 
Because right now, in Israel's redemptive, in the world's redemptive history, it hinges on this man. If no one does not go all in, there will be lives and generations affected. No pressure, Noah. No pressure. If you don't go all in, your children will be affected by that. That's not a statement of condemnation. It's just a reality check. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. If I choose to not raise my... Uh, we shared on Facebook a church uh, uh, picture. How many of y'all see that on Facebook? Children that are raised in church are rarely raised up in court. It's just a matter of sowing and reaping. I want to sow the right seed so my kids can reap the right blessing. And Noah chose to go forward with God. Now look at this. Here's the profile of a guy who went all in. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart, the imagination, the power of man's imagination that God has put inside of us is so powerful that it was evil continually. And the Lord was sorry. In other words, he, God was grieved. God was so grieved. Now, I just want to stop for a moment and look at this because when you're in a relationship with someone, how many know the sensitivity to their uh, feelings is very important? If you disregard the feelings of your wife, it's going to be a rough marriage. Or husband, likewise. Back in, however, relationship, however you need to apply that. But let me just say, that otherwise that relationship's not going to go so well. If you don't care about how that person feels, God is a God of love. He's a God of emotion. He gave us emotion. But here's God who was grieved by sin. God was grieved by sin. He was grieved by uh, man's actions and the evil that happened. And here's, here's one thing I think. And obviously sin is offensive to God. God's a holy God. But here's another reason you know, sin, you know why sin uh, grieves God? Because sin hurts you. Sin derails you. Sin destroys marriages, destroys relationships, destroys what he wants to do in your life. Just as, and there's times there's things that my little kids do that it obviously ticks me off. But ultimately, if I see them do something that's going to self-inflict themselves and hurt themselves, it grieves me as a father. How many know God's a good father? Amen. He doesn't want that for us. And so uh, here we see God grieved. Now watch this. He was grieved and he said he would destroy man. I created for the face of the earth, man and beast, creeping thing, birds in the air. I'm sorry I made them, but Noah found, underline that, would you please? And I've got that on the front of your notes. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Actually, grace found him. How many glad grace found you? Amen. And then God told Noah to, to build. He was a man. He, he walked with God. And there's his family. And then we see the corruption. The earth was filled with violence. And God spoke to Noah. And God told Noah to build an ark. And you know the rest of this. Paul Harvey used to say, you know the rest of the story. And God commanded him to build an ark. And, and, he, and here's what I want us to be challenged with today. Maybe, you know, maybe you're kind of like, well, you know, how God was grieved with the sins of man. Maybe you're not in that category where you're doing things you know you shouldn't be doing. And I'm so glad that we're not living our lives with God based on my performance. Because how many know you will never measure up? There's sins of commission, things you know you ought not to do that you shouldn't do. Then there's sins of omission, things that you know you should do, but you don't do. As it be a, a husband that loves your wife as Christ loves the church. And I know, guys, I know you're pretty good guys, but I don't think you're reaching that just yet. I know I'm not. So there's sins of omission. In other words, sins that you know, that things that you should do, but you don't. So that's why we rely on the performance of Jesus. Amen. 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 But here's an area, maybe you're not grieving God in the sense that you're out here committing adultery and doing things to defame His name and the world says, man, what in the world? I thought He was a believer. But maybe there's areas in your life where the Holy Spirit's saying, I'm calling you to something higher. I'm calling you to something deeper. 
Maybe there's something you're holding on to. Maybe God's speaking to you like he spoke to Noah. And here's what I want to talk about what Noah does. I think it's absolutely amazing. What would you do if God spoke to you and you knew it was God and God said, build me a big old boat? I think I need an Americano, God. Are you sure this is you? Yep, make it with gopher wood. Pitch it. Here's the instructions. I'm going to cause the animals to come in. And, uh, you know, that was pretty, pretty mind-blowing. Pretty mind-blowing. And, 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 and it's what amazes me about Noah. He was so all in for God. This is crazy. Listen, God told him he was going to flood the earth. There had been no flood. There had been no rain. And Noah preached this for hundreds of years. God gave a long altar call. There again, the grace of God. I know that there was a movie that was made that was unbiblical and based on the Kabbalah and really uh, wrong and far off and crazy. But here, see the grace of God. God allowed time. The mercy and grace preaching the gospel to these individuals who did not repent and got on the boat. But listen to this. This is so awesome. Here's Noah building this boat, and it didn't happen overnight. According to one Jewish tradition, it says that Noah planted trees, waited for the trees to grow up, and then cut down the trees. I don't know if that's true or not, but the point is that the things of God, when He calls you to do something, it doesn't happen overnight. When we make that decision to follow Jesus, we bow our knee to Jesus and we say, God, we're all in. It's, it's not just, it doesn't stop there. How many know it's all in all the time? It's taking up our cross daily and following. It's denying self, our trust in self, denying that every day. And that's what Noah does. It wasn't just a one-time deal. Noah said, God, I'm all in. And in our American culture, we have this mentality that I've got options if things don't work out. I'll just go do something else. I'll just slip out. God, this is not as fun anymore. Man, Harvest Family's not as fun as it used to be. I think maybe I'll try something else out. Maybe this marriage isn't as good. I don't feel like I felt, maybe. Maybe I'll do something else. No, maybe, maybe what, what I know is that God, I don't know about this anymore. This is hard. I don't like this carpenter work. This is crazy. We're getting laughed at every day. Decades of building this boat and preparing for what God said would happen. Even after he built the ark, and you thought about what life on that ark would have been? I tell you, the life on the ark was a whole lot better outside. <laughs> You may have some rough days, but I tell you, your roughest day as a believer is way better than your best day as someone without Jesus. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. So he built the ark, and scholars estimate, listen to this. I, I think it's safe to say that it smelled pretty bad. Amen. See, we, we glamorize the things of God so much. That we don't think about those things like that. And just think it's scholars estimated based on the size of the ark accommodated 45,000 animals. 2,000 animals in the National Zoo of 400 different species. That's 22 zoos on the ark. What I'm trying to say is living for God is kind of like a zoo. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, listen, Noah had to feed those animals and his family around the clock. Don't you know they got sick of that, tired of that? Had to feed those animals around the clock, didn't get much sleep. The smell or the sound or the demanding task of 45, potentially 45,000 animals. There wasn't a whole lot of sleep. And during this time, uh, one Jewish tradition says Noah developed a real bad cough and, and, and had to battle through that. I don't know, it's extra biblical, but I, whether the, the point is that it was not easy to do what God had called him to do. And I think sometimes we over-glamorize the will of God so much and we think, oh, now this is the will of God. It's just a bed of roses. <laughs> oh, God's presence is so wonderful and we're going to float around with ease. <laughs> and every little hindrance and every little problem you think that comes your way, you think is the devil. Exactly. Come on. Not everything is the devil. Amen. Sometimes, and I'm going to tell you, let me just say this. 
going all in, life doesn't get, sometimes, going all in for God, life's not going to get easier. Living for God, it's going to get harder. And our flesh don't like to hear that. Now, it's awesome. It's, thank goodness Paul said it's a fight, but it's a good fight. Amen. 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 But we just think it's smooth sailing. Life gets easy. No. When you make a decision to follow Jesus, I promise you, it's not going to get easier all the time. It's going to get harder. What I mean by that is God will continue to stretch you and pull you and work on you until now what is tough for you and maybe you hit a ceiling and maybe two years ago where you hit a ceiling, God's pulling, stretching and growing you to where now those things don't even face you. What's he doing? Pulling that faith out of you to stretch and believe him for more and to go deeper and use you. Why? Because he can use you in a bigger way. Use you in a deeper way. I tell you, uh, when it started building that huge boat, that was a big task. But just imagine when they were on the ark. How tough that was. There had to be a commitment. It, was, it got more difficult. But let me just tell you, I think about this. When we started almost four years ago, Easter will be four years now. When we started, it was just 20 or 30 of us as a launch team that started and we stepped out in faith and thought that was crazy to try to step out in faith and, and try to pay the bills on this four acre and two buildings and, and just knew God was in it. And I think, man, you know, now I look back, I think, what was I doing with all my time back then? Actually, I had another job or two to pay the bills. But, but uh, look, from where we have grown and what God has done and how God has stretched us, I can't tell you that it's gotten easier. Actually, as we've grown, it's gotten more complicated. It's gotten tougher. It may have started out one way, but, you know, and, and here's what we got to realize. Do you want an easy life, or do you want the life God's called you to? When it's all said and done, and you take your last breath, are you going to say, man, I'm glad I had it so easy, God. I just coasted. Coasted in. And we're standing next to people that had their heads cut off for Jesus. Well, preach on, Pastor. It's good preaching today. You came through the rain to get something good. Well, let me just tell you, I don't want to look back at my life and say I had an easy life. I want to look back and say, God, the things that I thought were impossible, I watched you do. I watched you do awesome things. I saw people's lives change and turn around. In the times when God uses you, in the time that you see God do awesome, those impossible things, those miraculous things, those are the moments you look back and say, God, those were the best moments of my life. When you stepped out in faith. And so I think a lot of times people don't realize my job as the pastor is, is yes, to comfort the afflicted, but also to afflict the comfortable. And I love you. And I'm, we're all the same way. Sometimes we get into that comfort zone. And it's so easy to coast. And, and I, there's times you need a middle break. You need a vacation. There's times where you need that. That's good. Get rest and things like that. But, but ultimately, if we're too comfortable and we're not moving forward in God, something has to happen. We obviously, what has to happen, you need a big vision from God that will make you uncomfortable. If you have a vision from God or something you feel like God's spoken to you to do and, you, and you're comfortable with it and you think that you can do it in and of yourself, it wasn't from God. Amen. Amen. When God tells you to do something, I guarantee you, you're going to say, God, there's no way. Wrong person. You're going to be like Moses. God, no. It. I rebuke you. No. No. God calls you to do big things. Why? He's a big guy. And you know what? You may be comfortable and you may enjoy all this family and where we are now, but I'm telling you, it's not going to be like this for long. This church is growing. It's going to continue to grow, and we're going to be a church that reaches many, many, many people for Jesus. I think somebody here needs to give the Lord a hand and praise for that. Well, I just like it small. I just like it small, Pastor. You're comfortable. We're comfortable. We, we like things. I, we, we, don't, we like our little comfort zone, our little uh, armchair Christianity sometimes. No, we, we have to get out of our comfort zone. And here's what Jesus said. Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, 
He said to deny yourself. That's how God tells us to deal with this comfort mentality. Jesus just says, deny yourself. <laughs> Boy, man, isn't that, I mean, you know, no way around that one. Deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow me. Other words, how do you do that? Number one, recognize you can't save yourself. Number two, recognize you need to trust God daily and not yourself, but depend on His grace, depend on the Holy Spirit. And here's what I believe. Uh, I believe <laughs> as you grow in God, things are going to get complicated, but here's what we have to understand. If we, cho if we choose to, to get involved in, in sin, sin will complicate your life. In a bad way. I think that goes without saying. But sin complicates your life in a real bad way. But here's what we don't recognize sometimes. You know the blessings of God complicate our life too? But they complicate your life in a good way. Have you ever thought about that? Some of you are having a say la moment with that. But uh, it's, it, God does it in a way in which you want your life to be. Let me just say this. Well, the day I got married to my beautiful wife, my life got complicated. In a good way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise God for those complications. I love them. I'm thankful for them. Man, this uh, week will be our nine-year anniversary. Yes. God is good. And uh, complications. And you know what? And Brought those, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And God brought along three complications named Micah, Jackson, and White. <laughs> and I love those complications with all my heart. I feel like we never stop going, doing here and there. And I've heard, uh, you know, some of you have maybe heard this the more money you make, you know, your top, top taxes get more complicated. Some of y'all are praying, God, complicate my life! <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say this. God doesn't want your life to get easier necessarily. Now, I, please don't confuse not what I'm, what I'm saying. There's a peace that passes all understanding. There's a joy unspeakable and full of glory. But as far as he wants life and the issues of life and what you're doing for him, he wants there to be complication. But in a way that glorifies him. I'm not talking about suffering, sickness. Please don't understand. That's not what I'm saying. But I wonder if, if we are willing to go as far as God is stretching us to go until life sometimes gets inconvenient. Will you allow God to inconvenience you to get up out of bed in the morning? <laughs> I think it was Daryl K. Roll, the famous uh, Texas Longhorn coach that said, you know, luck. He said, I never saw anybody laying up under a tree, under a shade tree. I've never seen luck jump on them. <laughs> oh, you just got lucky. Somebody said, oh, you're an overnight success. They said, oh, it's the longest night of my life. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> no, no, that's not, that's not what I'm talking about. The moment it becomes minimally inconvenient, and we don't know about it. Oh, I don't know if it's God or not. Oh, I don't know. I, I just, you know, if it don't come easy, let it go. That's my motto. <laughs> But I can promise you, if you live that way, you'll never experience the power, the joy, the intimacy, the, the fulfillment, the peace that God wants you if you're not willing to inconvenience yourself. What if Mary had said, I don't want to be an, a, a, an unmarried teenage mother. That is inconvenient, God. What if Paul would have said, I don't think I like these shipwrecks, God. It's so inconvenient. These Corinthian, the Corinthian church, are, people are crazy. It's so inconvenient to deal with these problems. I don't like getting stolen, God. It's just so inconvenient to me. And you see in Romans chapter 1, Paul, you see the heart of this man. I'm not going to take time to read through it, but I want you to read through it when you get home. But here's Paul who had such, he felt such an obligation and such a burden for people in Rome that he had never even met God, the grace of God was working in him that he could not sit still. He didn't care about the inconvenience. 
Because he was so in love with God. And it's not about saying, you need to inconvenience yourself. That's no, that's no different than saying uh, to a, you know, like the monks did. You need, to, you need to abstain. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to shut yourself away. That's not what I'm talking about. When you see the grace of God, the love of God, you don't care about it. <laughs> Man, I'm enjoying this this morning. I think I'd go another two hours. <laughs> and what you notice is, anybody that God used in Scripture had a very high tolerance for inconvenience. Did you hear what I said? Anytime you see someone God used, oh, use me, God, use me, God. Anytime you see somebody God used in Scripture, they had a very high tolerance for inconvenience. It's so anti it's so anti our culture, isn't it? Because we'd rather sleep in on Sunday. Because it's not convenient for our flesh. You know why you need to serve on a team? Not, yes, because it's inconvenient to your flesh, but ultimately in the light of God's grace and love, you don't care about inconvenience. Noah, he didn't care about uh, animals, stinky animals on the ark. And we think it's, man, it's like God's asking us, for the world if we have to change a dirty diaper. It's quiet in here. Is that my heart beating? <laughs> Y'all still hear you going on. And I'll tell you right now, we, we need to face the inconveniences. You need to break through those inconveniences and quit allowing yourself. We, we talked last year on how we are a spirit man. We are a spirit being. We have a, we have a body. We have a soul, mind, will, and emotions. But what happens a lot of times, our, we allow our spirit man to be the caboose. And our mind, will, and emotions, and body, our flesh, to be the engine of our life. And you're allowing your life to be dominated by the flesh and not by the spirit. Man, we got to walk in the spirit. I know I'm saying some straightforward things this morning, but I say it because I love you. And I'm saying that I don't want God. I want you to give God room to work. Here's what I want to, as we close right here. Number four, we celebrate grace. You know what grace is all about? Grace is all about a God who said, I'm going all in. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Grace is about God who said, I'm going all all in for them. God so loved you and me that he did not hold anything back. We celebrate the grace of God, but that's really what it comes down to. The bottom line is the fact that God said, and, and Paul reiterates this in Romans 8, God did not withhold his own son. How will he not with him freely give us all things? That's the God we serve. That's the grace of our God. And here's Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane saying, Father, not what I will, but what you will. Jesus was saying, Father, you're all in. I'm all in. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're celebrating God who went all in. And the picture of the Bible, the story of the Bible, is a story of a God saying, I'm going all in. Amen. And now the Holy Spirit speaking to you and me, and he's saying, Come all in. Come all in. Be all in for me. Do you stand to your feet? I want our worship team to come. The real question is, are we willing to go all in? And this is an opportunity this morning. Some of you, you never really committed your life to Jesus. And that's awesome. I'm going to give you that opportunity. This is an opportunity for you to say, I'm all in, God. I receive, I want to receive Jesus. I want to be all in. Maybe it's an opportunity for you to say, God, maybe there's some areas of my life I'm holding back. Maybe I've allowed my, my body or my mind, will, and emotions to, look, to dominate me, and I've not been able to be dominated by my spirit, man. To be all in. I don't know where you are, but right now, would you just bow your hearts with me? Just bow your hearts, and I want you to pray this prayer and just say, Holy Spirit, you don't have to say it out loud, but just in your heart of hearts, and God hears you, and just in your heart of hearts, and just say, Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me today about being all in with? 
What is God? Just say, Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me through this message? Just, just, say, just say it like that. Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me through this message today? Holy Spirit is so sweet. It's not a voice of condemnation. It's not a good voice to beat you down. That's Satan. Don't listen to that. But the voice of the Holy Spirit is a voice of conviction. And He'll speak to you to come up higher, to go deeper. He'll stretch you and challenge you to come up and to, to be like Jesus. And to use your gifts and talents and abilities for Him. If you're here this morning you say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus as my Savior. I'd like to invite Him into my life. I'd like to put my trust, not in myself anymore. Maybe you feel like you've just been trusting yourself and the things that you've done. But you understand now that it's all on the basis of God's grace you are walk, walk in a relationship with Jesus. If that's you, if you're here and you say, I want the grace of God, I want to know Jesus. You just slip up your hand. One, two, three. Slip it up. Let me pray for you. Yes? Anyone else? Yes? Anyone else? Anybody else want to receive the grace of God in my life? Maybe you're watching on our YouTube channel. Watch it on your phone, tablet, computer, wherever you are. Maybe you can pray with us. You can receive Jesus in your life right there where you're at. But here's what I want us to do before we go any farther. Those of you that raise your hand, it's awesome. It's awesome. Your life's going to be changed and transformed by the grace of God. Maybe you've been feeling like you've got to pull everything uphill and make everything happen to, to make it to heaven. That's just not true. It's just the lie of the enemy. Thank goodness Jesus pulled it all uphill, all up the hill of Calvary. Amen. And took upon your sin and took upon all that. And now you rest and trust in Him. As I said, this doesn't mean life is easier. We don't realize that when we go all in for God, now we've got a target on our back. But we don't have to be scared of the enemy. He's real, it's valid, but we're not scared of him. He's defeated. But you need to understand that there are battles and tests and trials. And so let's pray right now. Those of you who raise your hand, I want everybody to pray. I want you to pray for those that raise their hand. And pray for those that are watching on our YouTube channel. Could you just do that and pray after me? Heavenly Father, come to you in the name of Jesus. I receive your grace. I believe you are the Son of God. That you died for my sin. I want relationship with you, God. I'm all in today. I give you my life. My dreams desires, all that I am, all I ever will be, belongs to you. Father, I declare on the basis of your word, because of my faith, I am now the righteousness of God in Christ. I thank you today and I am born again. I am transformed. I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. And all things have become new. I am saved. Come on, just give Jesus a big shout of praise. for we're going deeper in the Word of God. We're going to talk about our authority in Christ. I'm sick and tired of the enemy trying to beat up God's people. Amen. We need to learn how to stand on God's Word and use our authority and walk in the victory that Christ provided for us. So that's what we're getting into. I want you to be here. If you have not signed up for a small group starting this Saturday evening, some of them, Please sign up on your way out. We're going to contact you tomorrow. Help you get your direction, get you plugged in, help you get started. And it's actually, the, we're going to be going along. We're going to have video curriculum there at the homes, a discussion that goes along with what we're teaching on Sunday. It's just for this month. It's just four weeks. You hold your breath for four weeks. Almost. But like maybe four seconds, maybe. But get plugged in. Let's say, you know what, church? Right here, I know everybody decides on Easter that I am going all in. Let's decide right here. We're all in, God. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Let us pray.
pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless you. We just praise you. Give you glory today. Thank you for your word, Lord. Holy Spirit, guide us in this word. Teach us in this word, Father, that we receive today. We won't let the enemy steal it. We won't let the enemy come in and steal what was spoken in our hearts today. Thank you for, as we renewed our mind to your word, Father. We love you, praise you, give you glory in Jesus' name. Somebody shout all in. All in.